Hello everybody, my name is Givento. Welcome back to another episode of YouTube School for Beginners. Episode 3, to be exact. I know that it's been a while since the last episode came out, and I apologize for that. It's been a rough schedule, and I also encountered some technical problems with my editing software. But those things are solved now. So I want to welcome you in here. It's nice to have you here. Go grab a coffee, have a seat comfortably, and we're gonna go through some really good stuff in this episode. But before that, it is very important that if you haven't watched the first episode or the second episode, I need you to do that first in order to understand the things that I'm talking about in this episode. And if you haven't watched episode one or episode two of the YouTube School for Beginners, you should go do that first. It is very important steps that took us to where we are today. The links for those videos should pop up somewhere around here. Now, today we're gonna go through setting up your YouTube channel. Last time we started it up basically creating a YouTube account and a YouTube channel, which is currently completely empty. There's nothing in there. So what we're gonna do today is that we're gonna take a look at the settings behind the scenes inside of YouTube and see what needs to be done to get this channel going before we create our content. There's a few settings in there that we need to take a look at. Some changes will be made. And also we're gonna go through what kind of equipment you might need to get started creating content on your YouTube channel. Microphone, camera, lighting, etc. So if you like this kind of content and if you feel that this gives something to you that you can actually use in real life, consider subscribing. But if you subscribe, don't forget to turn on the notifications bell. Otherwise, you're going to miss out on the next episode when I release it. So turn on the bell and you'll get notified the next time that I release a video like this one. And also, if you liked this video, if this video helped you, please leave it a like at the end of the video. That way I know that I'm doing the right thing and you're helping my YouTube channel very much by doing that. Also, comment down below if there's any questions you have along the way. It could be a lot of questions and I'm gonna answer all of them for you. So in that case, if you're ready, we're gonna hop into this episode right now. Okay guys, so if you log into the YouTube account that you created last time, you do that by clicking on the top right corner on YouTube, like this. We are currently logged into the Given to YouTube School tutorial account. Now, as I said in the last episode, Everything on my computer is in Swedish for obvious reasons because I'm from Sweden But the buttons on your end will be on the same place So don't worry about that and I'm gonna translate this to you while I click it Okay, so what we're gonna do now in the menu if you click your picture Over here you go down to YouTube studio and click that now you will enter the behind the scenes of your channel now this is where you set up your channel. All of the stuff that you need is in here. The first time you log in, you will get a tutorial with these blue messages, a little bit here and a little bit there. I suggest you read them because it's going to help you navigate a lot in here. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here to the pencil. Now you have three bars over here, layout, brand, and info. If you click the info tab, this description right here, this is your, think of this as your home page. This is the about tab on your YouTube channel, which is here. So for example, you wanna do a good presentation of your YouTube channel in text on this page. Don't make it too long. There's a maximum of 1000 signs. I suggest that you be, that you're thorough, but simple. For example, welcome to Given to Us YouTube School for Beginners. On this channel, you will be introduced to what YouTube is, how to get started, what to do, what not to do, what softwares to use, what hardware to use, and how to set up your account in order to grow your channel in the future. This channel will feature a step-by-step -step handbook of what you need to do. For example, now make it simple, but describe thoroughly what this page is about so people know wh where they are you can also add another language by clicking this one the plus sign if you want to add it in your own language for example this is your channel's unique web address 
Now, at the time being, it looks like this. Because this is a completely new channel, we don't have our, our own name here, our specific site name. For example, my usual account, my given to account, looks like this. As I've highlighted here, this is my personal YouTube address. I can give this one to people everywhere. I can click the link and they will get to my given to YouTube account site. Currently, this site has this address and you can't change that yet. You can change it later on. When you grow your channel, you will be eligible to change your channel name. You will get an email when that is possible. So don't worry about it because whenever the time to do that is appropriate and when you actually can do it, you will get notified on your email. And then you can claim your address, given that the name isn't taken, of course. Also, if you want to have your social media links on your homepage on YouTube, this is where you add them. I highly recommend that you do that. Always use the power of social media. For example, you can add your, your Twitter or your Facebook page, your Instagram, your TikTok, whatever you need, whatever you feel that you need to have here that people can click on to get to your other channels outside of YouTube. Always connect these social media accounts with your YouTube because it gives you more audience and more possibilities. So for example, Facebook, and then you put the address in and then you just click add one more time. Twitter, one more. Now for you guys that may be wondering, what do you mean by an Instagram web page address? Instagram is basically an app on your phone. You don't use the browser to browse Instagram, but you actually can do that. And in order to get to your, to your specific site, you can do this on the internet. For example, if I do like this, you will get straight to my Instagram page where you can browse. And then we can add the last one. For example, we can add our PayPal so that people can donate to your channel. There we go. Now, links on banner. We don't currently have a banner. We're going to create a banner later, but the banner is a picture. This is your profile, your channel picture. The banner is a picture that will go all over here on this place right here. So your links will be featured on that banner. Contact information. Let others know how they can contact you with business opportunities. The email address that you give down below will be shown in the about tab on your channel and will be visible to your viewers. So put the same address, email address down here as you created your account with like this. And then for the love of God, don't forget to click publish. Publish is the same thing as, as save. You save the information and you make all of this be shown live on your channel. There we go. And now it's live. So we have to update the page, refresh and go to the about tab. Look at that. Here's the description of the channel. Here, you click that. That's the email address for business opportunities. And you got the links right here. Now, the links don't show on the banner yet because we don't have a banner yet. But we're going to fix that soon. Now, let's go back to YouTube Studio. And here, under brand. Now, this is your profile picture that is presented on YouTube. For example, when you comment on other people's videos and stuff like that, this, this pin will be shown besides your name. Um, now, it is important that when you upload a profile picture to YouTube, use a profile picture with good quality, okay? So take your time in doing this. Now, this is just for, for this tutorial. And it also says very clear that it has to be at least 98 times 98 pixels and maximum four megabytes. You can use PNG or GIF files. Now, here is the banner picture. We haven't uploaded any banner picture yet, but we're gonna do that now. Click upload. Now, if you have a saved banner picture, you can go use that. Here we got the picture. Now, what you're looking at right now is, is the visibility of your banner, depending on what unit people are watching your channel. Here it says visible on all units. So this part in this square is what people will always be able to see, no matter if they're looking on a computer, a smartphone or a TV for that matter. This part is visible when people are watching on, t on a TV. All of this will be shown like this. 
This part is what's visible on a computer. Now you can reshape like this. Always choose a banner picture where the things that matter the most in your banner are centered like this. For example, you don't want your logo name up here because then it's not going to be visible on all units. Only if people are watching your channel on a TV, for example. So always center it to the middle so that you know that no matter where people are watching, they're going to see at least this. And this can be a really tricky part. There we go. Done. Now, the banner picture, as it says here, it has to be at least 2048 times 1152 pixels and the maximum of six megabytes. That is not an easy task. I recommend you go into this page, placeit.net. Here you can make your own banners with pictures and text. You can create a free account and then you can browse on the categories that match your channel the best. And then you can tailor your banners your YouTube banner and then you pay a small amount for that specific banner and you will get it downloaded to your computer in a high resolution picture. In that way you know that it's top quality. I highly recommend place it. I used it numerous of times for different stuff. Now the only problem that might occur when you do that is that the file size of that banner is too big. It might be bigger than six megabytes and then you won't be able to upload it to YouTube anyway. So what you need to do then is simply just resize the picture on your computer. Make it a little bit smaller. That way you're going to decrease the size of your file and you're going to be able to upload it. So now we've uploaded the banner picture. Now this is a watermark in your videos. This is not necessary to have. You can use it if you want to. I'm not currently using it, but if you notice after a while that people are using your videos in their videos and you don't want that to happen, you can put a water stamp on your videos that is unique for your videos. You can upload it here. For example, you're the same as your logo. Now we want to go live with this picture, so click, so click publish. Always click publish when you're finished. And now we can see how it looks live. Update the page. And there you go. And now your links from social media are automatically also put up here and they're clickable. Monetization, you cannot monetize your channel yet, but it is very clear what needs to be done in order to become a YouTube partner. You need to have 1000 subscribers at the very least. At currently we have zero subscribers. This one will change when your channel starts to grow. You need 4,000 public view hours. Now, that is mandatory. And if you just hover over the info sign, it'll, it'll be a little bit better explained. Two-step verification to secure your account. And you need to have zero active warnings or breaking of the community guidelines. If you have active warnings, you are not qualified for you to partner. But click this one. Message me when I'm qualified. That way you'll get an automatic message when you can actually become a YouTube partner. That way you don't have to keep track of this yourself. You click that. We will send an email when you're qualified to search. Perfect. Okay, so we're gonna go from top to toe now. Overview. This is a channel overview. Now we don't have any videos uploaded. We have no subscribers, no views at all. This one will show you the last month of statistics or the last 28 days. Number of views, views counted into hours, top videos, your most popular videos, etc. If you click this one, this is a list of all of your videos on YouTube. And when you add your videos to YouTube, they're gonna pop up here and you're gonna be able to edit them in this tab as well. These are your live streams that will be saved after you've conducted a live stream. They will be saved as videos here so that people can watch them later. Playlists. When you grow your channel and you uploaded quite a few videos, maybe you have different categories. For example, on my channel, I have trailer reactions. I have horror games, YouTube school videos, stuff like that. And 
I want to sort them out so that it's easier for the viewer to find what they're actually looking for. Then you can create your playlist over here. You just click new playlist here and then you add the videos that you want to add. Now this is the analytics tab. This is a live analytics tab. It is always live updated. This shows how many views you have, view time in hours, how many subscribers, etc. And it's going to be a diagram here, depending on which day it is and how it's been for the last month. Here's the range tab. You can see exactly everything that you could possibly want. Now, we don't have anything on these tabs yet, simply because we don't have any content. So there's nothing to measure at the moment. But from this tab, you can see exactly where people are finding your videos. It doesn't necessarily have to be on YouTube. People can perhaps Google stuff and then your video pops up and they click it. That'll show here too. Engagement. Now this is how long people are watching your video for. Do they only watch for one minute and then they click the next? Do they watch the whole video? Uh, how many likes your videos get, etc. This is a very good tool for you to know if you're doing something wrong. Here you can see who are watching your videos. Men, women, what kind of ages, from which countries are they from, unique viewers, subscribers, etc. This is the comments section. All of the comments will be listed here. In that way that you can respond to the comments on your videos. I highly recommend that you try to respond to as many comments as possible because the viewers like when you're engaging in what they're saying. They like being listened to. And sometimes you will get comments with curse words and swear words and things that are inappropriate. And YouTube has its own automatic filter and might place those comments in another section. Also, if people post links and stuff like that. This is to protect your channels and to protect the viewers. Those comments might, be, might end up in this one. Awaiting review. Subtitles. If you want to add subtitles to your videos, you can do that over here. Copyright. Now, this is a very important section. The thing about YouTube that you, you need to know, you can't do whatever you want on YouTube. You can't rip people's videos. You can't listen to entire songs or watch entire movies because you're gonna get copyrighted. YouTube has an automatic system that detects videos, movies, songs, and stuff like that, that actually belongs to other people, or in many cases, big companies. It's called Content ID. The Content ID will detect whenever you upload a video where sound or movie is somebody else's. And if it's too much, and if you show too much of that in your video, you could get a copyright claim. Now, a copyright claim isn't that bad. It simply means that the content ID detected that you're using other people's stuff. And in that case, several things can happen. One of those things are that nothing happens at all. You can show your video on YouTube. It's absolutely no problem at all. But you can't monetize that specific video, meaning you can't earn any, any money on ads on that video because most of the video belongs to somebody else. Another thing that can happen is that your video can get blocked in several places throughout the world. Some places your video will be shown, some places it will not be shown. Or it can be completely blocked. Nobody can see your video and then that's just that. You can always make an appeal on these copyright claims. For example, the law of fair use. For example, reaction channels have this problem a lot. For example, if I want to watch a trailer and I upload the trailer reaction and I get a copyright claim saying that this is my content, but you're showing it on your channel, you can't monetize. Okay, fine. Maybe I can cut out a few parts of the trailer reaction to short it down a bit. But fair use is also applicable on, on a lot of videos. Now, the only one who can actually determine if that is the case is you. So be careful when you make an appeal. The appeal can be either approved and then your video will be shown or it can be declined and then your video can get blocked. The worst case scenario that you do not want is a copyright strike. Now a copyright strike is a warning, a copyright warning. 
you will get a maximum of three warnings on your channel and then your channel will be shut down, deleted, alongside with all of your videos and there is nothing you can do about that. No way to appeal that. So be careful when you upload content to YouTube. And this on the very bottom is the sound library. This is really good stuff for you. This is free music, free sound effects that you can download to your computer and use without getting copyrighted in any way. This is, cr this is music and sound effects created by YouTube for you to use in your videos. It is the absolute safest way to produce videos, to avoid getting copyright claims or copyright strikes. For example, find what fits your video the most. You can also click here and you can sort in genre or titles length, artist name, etc. Same goes with the sound effects. You can save certain songs that you like by clicking the star and they will end up in this in this tab. If you want to download it, you just click download and it will download as an mp4 file on your computer. And you can use it as many times as you want in your editing software. All right guys, this is the only part of YouTube Studio we're going to go through right now because the other parts will come when we actually upload content. But first, in order to upload content, we need to make content. And in order to make content, we need an editing software, a recording software, and we need hardware such as microphone and camera. So tag along. All right, guys, I know that was a lot of talking and a lot of things to take in, but it's important stuff you can always go back in the video if there's anything that you forgot about. Now, what we have to go through now is the hardware part. Video camera, microphone, those two things are the most important things of all. I do not want to be the guy that recommends a shit microphone to you guys that you're using for a few videos and then all of a sudden you feel like, I don't like the sound of this, or people are commenting like, your sound isn't good um, or you, you, you don't feel satisfied, you might as well do it right from the very beginning. Trust me, I've done this myself. I've had three different microphones and before I got completely satisfied with the sound, I spent a lot of money for no reason on other microphones. So what I do recommend, I highly recommend, is the microphone that I'm currently using. It is the Yeti Blackout microphone from Blue. Which looks like this in real life. You got your mute option here, as you can see. My sound disappeared completely. This is the volume, That meaning not the volume in, in how your voice gets recorded, but the volume that you can hear yourself when you're speaking into the microphone. This is the gain wheel. Depending on how much sound you wanna take into the microphone, you increase or decrease this one. For example, as you can hear, it's going to be very different depending on how I turn this. This is the maximum. I can't speak very loudly right now because you'll probably get deaf. So I'm gonna turn that down again. These settings here is depending on what you're doing. For example, if you wanna record an entire room, the whole, the whole ambience in the room, there's one setting for that. If you wanna do a podcast, there's one setting for that. If you wanna do an interview where there's two people on two different sides of the microphone, you can do that. And this is a studio quality microphone, and it doesn't actually cost you that much. It is an investment, and this microphone is going to last for life. You can actually get this specific microphone for approximately 130 to 140 dollars, depending on where you're buying it. It's the Yeti Blackout from Blue. It's a powerful microphone with great quality. That is your sound right there. It has USB and underneath it, as you see here, I have a microphone arm. Now this is not 100% necessary for you to have just because you're gonna start a YouTube channel. 
It's a good thing to have though, because you can screw the microphone on to this one, making it a lot easier to handle, hiding and stuff like that. But the microphone itself comes with a stand, which looks like this. You screw the microphone tightly onto this one, and then you just put it on your table. You can have it in front of you. It's great stuff. This is heavy, by the way. You're not accidentally gonna tip it over and stuff like that. So a microphone, is a must. Don't use your iPhone microphone cord or stuff like that because the sound is not going to be good. It's gonna be disturbance noise throughout the entire video and your voice isn't gonna sound very good. Statistics say that it's more important for the viewer to have a good sound rather than camera quality. And that's a fact. Because if the sound is like really, really bad, people are gonna shut down your video. They don't wanna to listen to it. The second thing you need, obviously, is a computer. Now, it doesn't matter if you have a laptop or a stationary computer. So there's no need for you guys to go just buy a new fancy computer just because you're gonna start a YouTube channel. There is no need to do that, okay? You can do that later if you feel that you're becoming a serious YouTuber and you wanna produce content of great quality you want to be able to edit fast and maybe you want to play video games. You can't play video games unless you have a computer that can handle the video games. So don't forget that. The second thing that you need is obviously a camera. Now, the camera that I'm currently using, I'm pretty satisfied with it because it was so cheap. It is a webcam that is specifically designed for YouTube or live streaming video games, such as Twitch and stuff like that. It's an HD 1080p Logitech camera, the C920 to be more exact. Now, there is a newer model than the one that I'm currently using that is probably a little bit better than this one, but this one works perfectly for me. I never ever had any problems with this camera. So I can upload videos in HD every time that I record. I do not recommend you guys buy a cheap webcam. Do not, for the love of God, use the built-in webcam if you're using a laptop. The quality is not gonna do it for you guys. Not when it comes to YouTube videos. I highly recommend that you buy one of these cameras. Or if you wanna go spending a little extra, you can go buy a 4K video camcorder. That is my goal. That is what I wanna do next when I update my equipment. But there's no need for a 4K camera if you wanna produce YouTube content. That's what I'm trying to say here. Now the Logitech C920 webcam is very cheap for high quality. Now you can get this camera for approximately $85. And I think that's a pretty fair price for a camera that you can use in every single video that you produce. If you, if you produce content like I'm producing content, I'm sitting in here producing my content. I don't do any outside content when I move around or walk around or do stuff outside. Mostly of, of the time, I don't. If I do that, which has happened, I use my iPhone. But it's a great way to get started on YouTube and it's gonna last for a long time for you guys. Now that is basically the hardware that you need. Another thing that I definitely recommend you buy is a good light. Now, your camera is not going to do you any good at all, no matter how good it is, if it's 1080p HD or a 4K camera. It won't matter at all if your lighting is too poor. If I turn my light off, it immediately gets extremely grainy. As you can see here on my curtain, you can see like the war of the ants, everything gets grainy. I mean, I can you can still see me, what, what I'm doing and stuff like that, but it doesn't really look very good. So with good lights, everything gets a lot sharper. This is the light that I'm currently using. It's a ring light designed for TikTokers, where you can put your phone in the middle as well, which is great if you're gonna do live streams. You can check your live chat on the phone while doing your thing. It has four different settings, four different kinds of lights. You can also turn the light down a little bit and you can turn it up. Now this lamp is also adjustable. You can turn the ring up, down, facing you or facing away from you, depending on what you want to do with the lighting. And it connects 
with a regular standard USB cable straight into your computer. So that is it for the hardware guys when it comes to getting started on YouTube. Now you can always upgrade these things or get more stuff. Camera, good lighting and a good microphone. That is what you need. Okay guys, that is going to conclude episode three of YouTube School for Beginners. I don't want to get into the software part on this episode because I feel that it's going to be too much information at the same time. And that's just going to confuse people and it's going to get boring to listen to. So we're going to take that in the next episode. When we come to the software part is where things are getting exciting. Because when you got the softwares that you need, you're going to be able to start producing your content. That's where the fun begins. So I want to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for watching this video. Um, it's a pleasure to see the comments that this is actually helping people and that you want more of this stuff. Don't forget that I'm on social media other than YouTube. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok under the name of Given To. You can throw a direct message to me over there and I will always reply. And don't forget that if you're new in here, please feel free to subscribe. And don't forget to activate the bell in the top right corner so you won't miss out when I release the next episode of this series. And in case you haven't watched the first episodes yet, I highly recommend that you do that, so that you do this step by step. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys very soon in the next video. Have a great day. Bye bye now.